Yeah, Darren, what drew you to it? Uh, you, you come to Toronto, uh, really entering the prime of your career. Uh, why did you join MLS? It was funny. I was away in the European Championships with Ireland at the time in uh, Ukraine and Poland, and my, I was I was I'd run out of contract, and I, I'd, Celtic had an option to keep me, but I'd agreed to, or kind of we'd agreed together. I asked to basically leave. I'd been on loan the year previously to that. Um, so my agent was bringing me stuff, the usual stuff a kind of British based player would get, and from different clubs, and I kind of was very indecisive and eventually asked well, what do you want because a lot of the deals he was bringing were probably as good as I was going to get um, and Toronto came up and and just said look come out for, for three days so I suppose I had nothing to lose to come out for three days but I'll be honest I came out for three days to it was a nice flight out nice hotel good food oh, I had no intention of signing um, <laughs> who, yeah, took you out, who took you out that first night? <laughs> no intention of Paul signing Marner. Paul Mariner took me out with the squad and it was that was probably one of the it was it was crazy. He brought me out to um was it Earls? Earls, I think it was. Earls, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. went in we went in and Paul collected me from the hotel. Um we went to get I thought it was gonna be a very formal dinner. <laughs> uh, knowing Paul I think he's known well enough, it wasn't formal, but it all the I think eight of the squad ended up showing up. So Thorsten Frings came, Danny Kuvermans, uh Terry Dunfield was there. So they all came and sat and we never ate. We just had a few beers together. My wife was there. We we had a chat and I think they all took a turn to try to convince me to come. It was it was like they were they were kind of half half kind of trying to sell it to me, but yeah. brilliant. It was brilliant. It was what a night. I woke up the next day thing and that was mental. I went in then to the train ground the next day and just saw the whole I fell in love with the place basically after three days and I got the itch and I thought I want to do this. It's completely different playoffs and I thought very well there's something I can do. Um now never obviously did it, but I knew Toronto were going to get there. Now um so that was a big thing for me coming from Celtic. I, I knew I wasn't maybe going to go to a club. Um I certainly wasn't going to go to a club team in England that was going to win a league because you top four teams in England. I certainly wasn't going there. Um, so I wanted something with a purpose and Toronto was a city I saw with huge potential, or sorry, a team, sorry, with huge potential. Mm -hmm. And all we had to do was, I thought it was, was easier than it certainly turned out to be, but qualify for the playoffs, how hard can it be? Um, you should be a, a, a squad with the, the infrastructure Toronto should be in the playoffs every year. And the fact that they'd never been probably appealed to me more than anything. What, what what did you kind of find was was going wrong at, at CFC while you were there? Because obviously it was pretty tough two years for the team. Um, before you got there, there'd been the whole Kuvermans calling them the worst team in the world and, and that business. Um, what what was missing there? Because there were some good players in the squad. I can tell you what was missing, I'll reply. <laughs> I'll let Kurt go first. If you want. No. no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, this, oh. no, this is a team that, uh, what, Darren, Darren, I think uh, you left midway through 2013, right? But, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they won, I think they won two of their first 20 games in that season, right? I mean, this is a team where you look back, there were some talented players, but there were awful lot of bad players on that squad too, so. Yeah, I, I probably, I could, I could comment on the players. Um, I couldn't comment on the ins and outs of, of who was bringing them in, but certainly in, my, in the time I spent there, I signed towards the end of the the previous season with Paul, um, and I was very much told, "Look, I think Toronto were bottom of of the kind of conference. That there was obviously no hope of playoffs or anything like that." So I was told, "Look, use the three months to to acclimatize, find your way, and then when next season comes, we're going to make a kind of a bigger push." So I, I kind of used the first three months to do that. There was kind of ups or downs, but results weren't really a problem because. We weren't going anywhere anyway. And then kind of in the off season, obviously the off season was very long and it was an off season. I spent a lot of time training and I was really looking forward to coming back. And I think I might be wrong, but it was a couple, it was maybe a month before we came back, Paul left and and not only Paul left, but Kevin Payne came in and, and uh, then Ryan Nelson followed him. And I came back and obviously there's, if you're coming back to, you've been, kind of told by a lot of people that you're you're kind of going to acclimatize and then we're going to start but the people that told me that were gone by the time I was meant to even start so kind of we were resetting again and you were trying to find your feet again and Ryan Nelson really good guy a good coach but a horrific decision to bring him in he was playing in the Premier League 
So, yeah. and I've, I've no, I don't want to kind of talk about um, sounds like I've kind of an ego or whatever. But I'm a player that's come over, and my manager's away back playing in a Premier League game, and I'm in preseason, and I'm thinking, what's going on? Like this is this is crazy. And I, I, listen, great guy, absolutely brilliant guy. But I'm thinking we're meant to be. I'm meant to be start at the start of a project here that's going to move the whole club forward. And I properly bought into it. I still do. I still follow Toronto massively. But I was really, really passionate about doing it. And I thought, right, this is a bad start. Um, Kevin Payne, another guy who I'd, I ended up getting on really well with, but I had a, a kind of a coming to with early doors was when he came into the press and criticised how the players came back and the conditioning of the players. Now, I can tell you now, the players came back in brilliant condition. Eric Hasley came back in a different condition to the rest of us. And he criticised the whole squad. So I, I ended up off the back of that. I had a, a row with Kevin. I think I pulled you up, Kurt, I think, first day in Florida. It was a day I think I, I had a go at you for talking about players. But that was, in fairness to you, that was more me getting used to the culture of commenting on players on trial. I think you were commenting on players on trial, which I didn't I was like. going to get to that. I was going to, I was going to get to that. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. I was going to get to that because uh, I actually credit you, Darren, with teaching me a lesson that day, believe it or not. Uh, and I was a young reporter. I was a young reporter then. I think we were probably about the same age, actually. Uh, and uh, I kind of realized, I kind of realized that you you're gonna occasionally you're gonna be held accountable for what you write about people. And I think when you're a young sports journalist, you kind of think, well, I'm gonna say whatever I want to. But uh, I credit you that day for actually coming over and standing up for your teammates. And I probably was a little bit out of line, you know, uh, talking about how. I thought how poor some of the players were training because they were younger players, right? So uh, I, yeah. I always respected you for that. No, I appreciate that. You were right. You were right. And I probably agree with you. <laughs> but I, I felt, at that stage, I felt kind of like I wasn't, I hadn't been named captain or anything, but I felt kind of I had a duty to kind of um, protect people a little bit. It was probably something I did anyway. But anyway, kind of going back to the, the original point was there was a lot of change and, and then when I kind of, I was meant to be starting a project that thought, right, we're all going to move forward. There was so much, or uh, I, I quickly found out that the season, that season was getting called a transition year. Mm. And that Ryan Nelson spoke in the press at times talking about we were, he was bedding in his ideas, which he was, don't get me wrong. He, he coached the team well. And, and, but it was another transition year where he was trying to move certain players out to bring other players in. And he, he saw cultural problems, which I have to say I, I agreed with. Um, but I was thinking, no, hold on a minute. As you say, I was in my prime. I was coming there to play and to, to achieve something. And all of a sudden, I'd wasted three months acclimatising and they were telling me, now this is another season. Um, so straight away, but saying that, that sounds like I, I was constantly um, unhappy. I loved it. I loved uh, it. We know, you love, we, love, we know you loved it here. But I, another question for me would be, did, did, if I remember properly, I mean, it, your move was kind of sold as... Uh, uh, yes, he's come over. He's 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 helped change the culture. He's he's doing a good job for us, but he's just making too much money. So we got to get him out. I mean, did you did you appreciate how that kind of got out there as a we're going to move this player on because we don't agree with how much we're paying him? Yeah, but obviously I signed a contract with previous staff, previous members of of the club that weren't there anymore. Um, and I won't go into it because I don't even know where it sits, but. Put it this way, I can guarantee you, see if I wanted to sit out my contract, I could have. I had a contract there that I was on good money. I was happy. My family were happy. So when the first person to get hit with that was Richard Eckersley, if you remember. Yeah. yeah. Now, Richard was in a different position than me. Good guy, good player. I think everyone would agree he was on too much money. Um, you seen what he's doing now? Have you seen what he's doing now? Yeah, follow him on Instagram, but I don't speak to him, but he's... He's out in the woods, living out in the woods. <laughs> yeah, look it up. It's, it's, uh, he's, he, he's happy. Yeah, well, that's, that's all that matters. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I follow him and his wife, so no, they seem happy. But he was the first. Now, the minute that happened with Richard, I agreed with it, and I started to understand contracts. You need to understand, when I signed my contract, I was used to being in an environment where you got told what you were being paid, and that was it, and it didn't, didn't matter to the squad or whoever. you could. So I started to learn a bit more, and when that happened with Richard, I was thinking, I'll be honest, I knew myself. I was thinking, well, surely you have a conversation with me because I knew what I was on and I knew in terms of the value I had to the team, I was on too much money. But that conversation never came until 
it was it was a good way. We we played a number of games before the conference. So I sat with Kevin Payne one day um, and Ryan Nelson, and they actually I think they were I don't want to say they were nervous, but they I could tell they were thinking they didn't know what reaction they'd get with me. And and I actually said to them, I've been waiting for this this chat for ages. I knew it was coming. I knew I had to come. Um, I don't know. I think it was my alloc- the allocation money they were using or so. I actually, genuinely don't yeah. really understand it all. But I did understand I was earning too much in terms of um, the salary cap and all that. So if I remember uh, properly, if I remember properly, uh, we were uh, a lot of us in the press were a bit confused when I think it was an away trip to Kansas City, and all of a sudden your name doesn't show up on the team sheet, and everybody's trying to find out where you're. Were you already in the Ukraine by then? No, I, I landed in Kansas City. I was in the hotel. And then oh, okay, okay. Literally, when I landed, I had a call that, that came that was um, the deal was done and I had to fly. I literally was in the hotel. I had to fly straight back and and then straight out to Ukraine. I think I flew out from... My whole family flew into Toronto and I mean whole family, extended family for two weeks and I arrived back in to my condo and literally they literally arrived and I said, I'm away. That's me away. So um, it was it was strange how it was done, but I knew it was coming, um, and I had a decision. What the only bit that riled me a little bit, but I didn't want to speak about it at the time, was Toronto made it seem like I had to either accept a, a cut or they'd have to let me go. Where that wasn't the case, I could have stayed there, could have stayed, had a long contract. Um, but in fairness to Kevin Payne and Ryan Nelson, they actually offered me a a very lengthy contract. It was just with. Uh, severely cut wages which uh, obviously we didn't agree on and there was no there was no negotiation either it wasn't I didn't come back and say look if you get to this amount or this amount I just said look I'll go I'll go then and um, I knew it was a case I either stay and and kind of hurt the the team a little bit by my by my wages or go um, and I thought right I'll go and I had options to go as well in hindsight I'd have probably stayed because I ended up traveling a bit I was so content there I was so happy um, I'd have stayed. I'd have found a way to stay. Um, but things happened, and it moved. Uh, obviously, just, moved. just just two more years, and Javinka would have been there to help you. I know. <laughs> I know that would have been a pleasure. <laughs> a pleasure. No, but listen, and that 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 showed the obviously Kevin Payne moved on, and then Ryan Nelson moved on. And that was you know, come back to the original question. That was one of the main issues. Was there was no stability. There was no right. stability in in the playing squad. But above the playing squad, there was none. And the minute they got stability, and I don't want to say proper people in, because that's that's unfair in the people before, but, but p- people in with a clear vision, you saw how quickly the, the franchise then moved on, or sorry, the, the team certainly moved on and, and have done fantastically well since then. 